Welcome to LinkedIn for Business. We're going to look at profiles, business pages, and making connections today. This is the first of several LinkedIn videos and tutorials we're going to walk you through. And of course, I'm going to guess that over the next few months, LinkedIn is going to add a whole bunch more features, which they've been doing consistently now over the last year, that will necessitate us going through this process again together. So LinkedIn is an ongoing investment you're going to make in really truly building a strong social networking presence from a business professional perspective. So let's take a look at LinkedIn quickly. LinkedIn is 200 million members globally representing every Fortune 500 company, every major government, and most non-government organizations, and most entrepreneurs and post-secondary grads in major communities and hubs around the world. So LinkedIn is a go-to place for professional networking, making connections, recruiting, and even really gathering business intelligence. LinkedIn has really turned into a true, true information source and hub over the last year and a half. And many organizations and individuals are now using it to really gather pertinent business models and information, um, as well as truly seeing what's trending in the marketplace. So LinkedIn is also a lot like the gym. So why I say this is that, you know, we all have a gym membership. Most of us do. Uh, but most of us also just walk by the window and wave to our friends on our way to the coffee shop versus going in. And we wonder then why our health or our energy isn't where we want it. And the reality is we're not doing the work, is that we have to hit that gym daily or at least three to five times a week. And even just by getting in there and getting a little bit active, we're significantly healthier than those people who aren't. So it doesn't mean you have to be five hours a day in the gym or three hours, even 30 minutes five times a day, five times a week can make a big difference. Think about LinkedIn the same way, is that LinkedIn's a lot like the gym, is that in order for this tool to work, you have to work it. It means logging in, checking out who's been looking at your profile. Um, it means uh, looking at news feeds, sharing a little information with key contacts, and thinking of a way and making sure you're adding new connections you've met in the marketplace, online and whatnot on a regular basis. And so by doing this, by making it a daily discipline, LinkedIn can build some serious momentum and really drive some serious return on investment for you and your business. So in this module, we're going to talk about key steps to building a great profile. We're also going to talk about how to launch a business page. I mean, you're in business. This is a business tool. You need a business page. Personal profiles are great. Um, it's really your own personal resume slash bio slash networking tool that you're going to use as your first sort of foot forward as you go out and make connections with people. It's also what people will find when they search for you on the internet. But the business page is very vital. You need a profile for your business on what is truly the number one business network on the planet. We're going to talk about how to add personal connections and also how to ask for introductions and connections with people that you don't know. So it's really important the first part is to realize that an incomplete profile is the same thing as going to a networking function with a paper bag on your head and wondering why not getting the results you want and why people won't talk to you, interact with you, or take you seriously. So too often, this is how our profiles look. It doesn't have a photo, whereas an old uh, kind of airbrush photo from five years ago, it's a sparsely populated profile, and then we wonder why we're not getting great response from our connections or why many people aren't reaching out to us. So it's very important to have a complete LinkedIn profile. So here's what we're going to go through. Number one, we're going to talk about adding a photo, a complete work history, a full bio. So, you know, really important why we need a complete work history is that it tells a story, even if, you know, your last three employers are in slightly different industries or different positions, um, but it speaks to what you've achieved and your background. It also kind of tells a story about truly who you are and what you're about. And you may find that your next prospect that you connect with, the next business deal or business development opportunity, is that you have a commonality with somebody because you both went to uh, engineering as far as a, a degree. Uh, or it might be that you both uh, worked in sports marketing previous to the IT industry, for instance. And so your complete work history is very important. Also, your full bio is absolutely vital. Uh, one of the reasons why I'll show you in a minute is that LinkedIn has got its own search engine built in. And as people search for key terms, your bio affects those results. Uh, references and endorsements are vital because it's not just about what you say about yourself. Of course, it's important. More importantly, it's actually it's what are the people are saying about you and your brand. We're going to show you quickly how to connect your profile to a company page. And then number six is just a few tips on adding rich media to your profile, which is a functionality which has changed and evolved on LinkedIn in the last few months. So let's take a look 
right now at a LinkedIn profile. Uh, a couple examples of maybe sparsely populated ones, uh, and then full-blown LinkedIn profiles. I'm going to be sharing my own plus some profiles of my team members uh, within Socialized to kind of give you an idea of what a complete profile looks like. We're not going to go through the A to Z on how to start a profile from scratch. One of the reasons why is uh, last time I've done this, LinkedIn was not too happy when I created a false profile. So uh, at the end of the day, we're just going to walk you through the key fields and things you want to fill out. Um, but truly, it's just going to be a little thought process in the beginning and a little preparation you're going to need to do to make sure you can completely fill out your profile. So let's take a look now. When you begin your LinkedIn account, it's going to ask you some basic information, your first name, your last name, your email address, and a chosen password, and then you're going to be able to connect. Now, I think it's important to really look at why you need a full profile. I'm not going to walk you through step by step, you know, what to fill in as far as your job title, your description, and your work history. I think we all know how to fill in forms that ask us our background and whatnot. So I think that we're going to skip that step here, but I'm going to walk into why it's important to completely fill out your profile, in essence, the key components that you don't want to forget. So after you've chosen your first name, your last name, your email, and your password, and you've logged in, you'll walk through a series of basic steps that will get you started. Once you're started, I'm going to kind of walk you through why you need to really have a complete profile. I'm going to compare two individuals here. So it's important to look at, this is Abdul Hassam, and this is his... Um, LinkedIn profile. Uh, I'm debating whether it's really a person or it's somebody who's put a spoof account up uh, and you know might actually uh, be spamming, uh, be kind of trolling for information, uh, you name it. And it just doesn't look real. Now, the other side is it might be real. Maybe Abdul opened the account, um, hasn't been active, and it's just sitting there. Now, the danger of this, of course, is when you search for his name in Canada or Vancouver, for instance, it'll show up in search results in many cases. And so your LinkedIn profile, whether it's awesome and well put together, or it's, in essence, the analogy of going to a networking event and networking with a paper bag on your head, this is very much what this type of profile says, is that, hey, I don't want to share anything about me. I haven't taken the time to fill out my professional background, um, but I'm on here. And so you can imagine if someone with this level of sparse profile filled out, just a basic name and title, um, are going to have a very difficult time having anybody take them seriously if they're reaching out and trying to build connections. So even if this individual wanted to increase their network, it's going to be difficult because truly I don't know who this is. There's no photo. There's no description. There's no background. And there's nothing telling me about this individual. Now, if I switch this over to Paris Norris, Paris recently connected with me through a mutual connection, and uh, he's in the United Arab Emirates, and we've got sort of a similar background in training and coaching and leadership development. And... Even if I didn't know Paris, if I or if I was doing some research on him and I searched on on Google, often it's going to appear as his LinkedIn profile, and I click through, and this is what I'm going to find is this isn't some static sort of page like this where it doesn't tell me anything that's totally unengaging. It is actually a highly engaged landing page. He gives his full description of what he does, shows a lot of recent activity because he's obviously in there on a regular basis. It gives me a summary and a background of what he's about. So truly, you know, a history on who he is, what his passions are in his business. And he's added some rich media, which I'm going to show you how to do shortly. It's very easy to his profile. So several videos of individuals uh, interviewing him, both, you know, sort of from a, a YouTube-esque type aspect right through to mainstream media. So after watching a few videos here, it was really easy to make a decision to connect with him because it built a ton of credibility. It then shares his experience. Some people will just give their name, their title, and how long they worked there in one sentence, but he's done the right thing, and he's actually fully described both the benefits of doing business with his organization and why he's a great leader for that organization. In essence, profiling both his performance and the value of doing business with the organization. He's also added additional videos um, and information below that profile um, to really, really enhance and expand your ability to explore and learn more about him in a rich media fashion. He then, from his perspective, um, has you know a description of a company. My only criticism here would be, I believe he could actually uh, fill out a full description of this organization as well, uh, so that you can really get a full picture of his history of work, a full view of him as a professional over time. And so then he's done it here as well. And so he's given a really, really good kind of history over the last 12 years at least of employment and entrepreneurship. So for me, this is a very complete uh, profile. He's even added publications he's written, um, talks about his major languages, his education, um, and, uh, you know, walks through 
um, you know, a real full, full profile and tons of endorsements as well that he's obviously spent a fair bit of time gathering. Now, I'm going to get through endorsements in another video, but endorsements are a very, very important tool. And just a quick tip, if you want endorsements, find people you've done business with that you enjoy to do business with, write them an endorsement, and in many cases, they'll write one back for you. So this really is a fully engaging profile. I mean, I cannot leave this page and learn literally, you know, probably 80% of things I need to know about this individual, even to make a decision to do business with them. So I think this is really, if you look at these two extreme examples of Abdul versus Paris, we'll see that taking the time to put a proper photo and fully fill out all the forms and questions that LinkedIn asks you is going to give you a huge advantage. And then if you take advantage of some of the rich media opportunities as well, being able to embed them, it really makes a huge difference. So remember, this is in essence, it can either just be a boring static resume as well that just lists what you've done, or it can be a hub and a resource to all your other social connections, your network, and your work history and professional profile. Chad Rissenden works with us at Socialize. He's the VP of Digital Marketing. Um, and from this perspective, looking at his profile, not unlike Paris, he took the time to really fill out his profile. One of the things you'll notice on his title is even optimize it by mentioning the fact that he's in social media training, activation and intelligence. So he didn't just say VP of Digital Marketing and then below it says, you know, Socialize Limited. He actually took the time to fully fill out his profile and his title so it used key words that people may be searching for in his industry. So kind of a little tip is that Part of how you structure your LinkedIn profile will also improve the number of times you're found in LinkedIn search and the number of requests for doing business or connections with you. We also know, if you look at Chad's profile, he gives a nice bio, um, not unlike Paris did, describing his business and really a core value proposition for the person reading this. But in addition to this, if we look at this, he talks about he's a VP of digital marketing at Socialized. Well, you notice if you, if you hover over this, it's actually highlighted. And what happens is because we at Socialize took time to actually build a business profile for our organization, a business page, instead of mousing over, if you don't have this, you'll click on it and it'll show a list of anybody using the word socialized in their business or job title in the world. If you connect your profile specifically to the company you work with, this little business card pop-up happens. And the person reading it can actually click through and learn more about your organization. Again, enhancing that experience and really building credibility. So what we'll find here in this page, and we're going to update this page together, by the way, so I can show you some of the core functionalities here in a second. But you'll find on the page here that it gives you know a series of updates on what's happening in the organization. Um, it actually lists products and services are available and individuals within that company that you can reach out to and connect with within that organization quickly to do business with them. So this is a really important aspect because what this does, in essence, it legitimizes who you are. It shows a true corporate profile. So someone's digging deeper. They've met you at an event. They've got your business card. They look at your LinkedIn profile. They can then dig down deeper without even leave, leaving LinkedIn and make a decision to connect with you or even follow your business and your business updates within LinkedIn. So let's take a quick look at just how to make quick changes to our profile. So you may have a basic profile. If you don't have a photo, it's pretty simple. Um, if you click Edit Profile, it'll show you that you just click this photo button, you can upload a new image. Um, from this perspective, we can also, you know, even edit uh, various positions and existing titles and headlines. We can, we can also do updates here. Uh, but in addition to this, for instance, here, you'll see that we've actually got um, some rich media at the bottom here. But if I wanted to add rich media to any section, pretty well any document, I can actually add um, so images or documents right below this. So for instance, I might decide that, you know what, this is a this is my present position, but I want to add actually um, a recent presentation I did on SlideShare with Channel Next at a conference I spoke at. So I can actually take that presentation that I've done and embed it below this position. So I can add a link. There we go. And save it. So now you can see that you can actually really enhance even a personal corporate profile with a bit of an image. In addition to this, um, I might roll up here and actually right next to this here decide that, you know what, I'm actually going to add um, another video to this. So what I can do is below my background or bio, I can actually add another video here just by going into YouTube, grabbing the URL, so copying it. That's um, Command C on a Mac and Control C. Um, on a PC or a Windows based tool. I can add that link 
and save it. So there we go. You can see it's very quickly you can add rich media to the profile. So now someone can come into my profile quickly. I've got a good photo set up here. At least that's my opinion. I don't know yours, but I think it's a pretty good photo. Um, I've got my background here, but I've also added some more media. So a recent seminar really talking about who I am. Uh, and then we look at something that's more relevant to the agency and what we do as an example uh, of some of the seminars we deliver. And so it doesn't take too long where you can really begin to add some great content to your profile very quickly and simply. Uh, you can also add projects, languages you speak, uh, courses you've taken, uh, and other types of things as well. So once we're done editing, we click done editing. We've now updated our profile. What's also interesting is in your home feed, whenever someone logs into their home feed, one of the advantages of updating our profile on a regular basis is whenever you update your profile or add images or even share a post, it goes into the home feed of those people who are connected with you, stating that you've made a change or you've added media or you've added a post. So by adjusting your profile, adding descriptions or doing basic updates, you can maintain on the radar of many people within your network. Now that we've got our, now that we have our personal profile done, let's talk about our business page. It doesn't take a lot of time to set up a business page. In fact, it takes less time to set up a business page than it does a personal profile. So we're going to talk quickly about how to start and where you start. We're going to talk about adding products and services to your profile. And also just take a look at the importance of daily content and the type of content you could be sharing on your business page on a regular basis that makes sure that you show up in the information feeds of all the people that are following your brand and connected with you or searching for information from brands like yourself. So let's take a look. Making sure you have a company profile on LinkedIn that's fully filled out is really important. Number one, the last thing you want is maybe uh, an ambitious individual in your organization who might not have uh, the authority to do so, uh, or marketing knowledge, for instance. Go and create a business page on behalf of your organization. All they're going to need is an email address from your organization at yourdomain.com, whatever it might be, uh, to verify they work for the company and they can create a page. So the most important thing, even if you don't think you're going to be very active having a page, is to go in and claim it and make sure you add, add multiple administrators so that the page can never get lost or abused by other individuals within an organization or by a competitor even. So how you start your page is very simple. I'm not going to go through every step again because it's pretty simple, but I'm going to show you where to find the start, which is right here. So you go to here and add a company. You're going to ask the company name and your email address at that company. Now, this is important. You're going to add your company name, the name of the company. Be careful to choose it, spell it right, and whatnot. It's difficult to change these things. Then your email address at the company. If, for instance, you're working for uh, the Canadian division of an American company, so you create the email address of the company as yourcompany.ca, but then the domain you put on the company profile is yourcompany.com, it actually won't allow you to create that profile. The email address and the domain name have to match. It's a verification process to make sure that you're legitimately allowed to represent that domain online. So really important, this is also why using this demo, I'm not going to go through and create a fake company, is I would require an email address and a domain name at both of those things. But once you add your company name, your email address, and verify that you're allowed to officially represent the company, you have the right to act on behalf of the company to create this page, you click continue. What we're going to do is now I'm going to kind of take a step forward and walk through some of these fields that you want to fill out. So this is our company page. Uh, let's take a look at the various fields. If I just click the core edit button, what you'll notice is this is exactly the same thing you're going to see when you first start your page. Uh, of course, it's not going to be filled out. So walking through what you need to do. Choose your company name. If you noticed, I didn't just add my company name, but I actually kind of, uh, in a little bit of a keyword stuffing way, I guess, I actually added some of the key things we do. So social media training, activation, intelligence. You're then going to add a company description about what your business is about and what you do, which is important because it's one of the first things you're going to see on the front page. Then, of course, you want to select your default language. You're also going to add designated admins. And by ad to add admins, admins, all you have to do is actually just search someone's name. And if you're connected with them, they'll pop up. And then you can simply add them as an administrator for that domain. Now, in addition to this, what you want to do is, of course, add the, the company type, the size, the website URL. And again, this has to match your email address. Otherwise, it won't allow you to do so. Then you want to talk about the main industry you're in, 
um, the operating status and the year the company was founded. Pretty simple. What you're also then going to do is you're going to add three images. One of them, and I'll walk you through step by step how to do this, is your header image, your standard logo, and also a square logo. Then you want to add your company specialties. So what you're about. Remember, these things also show up in keyword search. And if you have a group you're a member of or a group your company is associated with, then you want to connect that group with your page as well so people can find that group. So these are sort of some of the key things you want to fill out. So as you can see, that's not that complicated. And then you're also going to add um, a service, a product or service. So your services pages are pretty simple. What it'll show is you can list and add multiple products and services. For me, one of them was social media speaking. If I click on it, you'll find it gives you a basic overview, gives you a place where you can add a video, which we're going to do together in a few moments, uh, and as well as a contact us section where you can actually indicate what key staff or contractors or individuals that can be contacted for this specific service. So it's actually a great way from various departments of the organization to be able to directly connect with the people that want to do business with them. So they don't have to dig through your corporate profile and guess who you'll be talking to. It actually is set up that way. So let's talk about modifying these images. So let's do this one by one here. So I'm going to go back to editing. So we've actually just rebranded our organization. You might notice in some of the videos we've got a different logo than we use now. So I'm going to do a rebrand on this page. So your first image here is your kind of default header. And it's going to be uh, 646 by 226 or 220 pixels or larger. I would suggest to get your designer just to simply build one for that purposes. So make sure it's 646 by 220 pixels. So I'm going to choose my new file. And here we go. So this is our LinkedIn header we created. I'm going to upload that and save it. So there's our new header, pretty quick. Then of course you want our standardized logo. So I'm going to upload a new image here. Just quickly again choose a file, which is our LinkedIn button, 50 by 50. And it's been submitted. And now if we publish our page, we'll see that we've now fully updated the branding. But it's really that simple. So to Finish your page, it doesn't take much effort really. You need three types of image sizes, you need a company description, uh, and then you need to notify, of course, your team they need to connect with the page. I'll show you in a minute. But quickly, the next step is adding services and products. So if I click over here under edit, I can actually add a product or service. Now from this perspective, I'm going to add a product. It's in business services, and it's called the Enterprise Social Media Bootcamp. Then I'm going to add an image for this boot camp, which has to be 100 by 80 pixels. I kept it simple because it's not a lot of room to work with, and I want to tell people what it's about. And then I add a description. So I can reach up here and actually copy this description, paste it in here. And then, of course, you can also add a video to the product. So in this particular case, I'm going to call it a sample seminar content. I'm going to grab a YouTube video URL. I'm going to paste it in here. It's already shown you that uh, it should show you a preview to make sure you got the right link. You can also add team members and employees that they can connect with. I'm going to do that at a later date. But then I can uh, simply publish our profile here, our new product. So there's a new product, so it doesn't take that long to add, especially if you already have that content somewhere else. So yeah, it is a bit of duplication. You're probably going to use content from you know your own business site. Uh, but I think that you know if you want five or six of your core offerings or verticals and then associating employees and staff with those verticals, it makes it easier for people to find how to do business with you. It also builds credibility for your organization when someone clicks through on that personal profile of an individual in your company and they can actually see a real dynamic company profile, all the staff connected with it. So the last thing we want to do quickly here before I, I move into how to connect your profile um, to the business page is of course you see here's an opportunity here to share an update. Now why this is important is as people follow your brand, your updates show up in their home feed. Uh, and it also, by the way, from a search engine optimization perspective, apparently inbound links from LinkedIn are actually very important. It can affect your rankings in a positive way. So what I'm going to do is you can share an update 
uh, you can share a thought, you can share a link, you can share a file. In this particular case, I'm going to share an article that I recently read, uh, put out by actually a blog post put out by Scott Monty, who's the head of social media for Ford. It's a great sort of weekly roundup of what's happened in social media. So I can quickly share this with all of our followers. And of course, it ends up right here as recent updates. In addition to this, of course, in the home feed uh, and also the pages feed of individuals following the brand, they're going to see these updates. This helps us keep us on the radar of individuals that we're connected with. Uh, it's good for search engine optimization if we're linking back to our own pages. And overall, it just keeps your, your page fresh and current. So quickly, how you connect your own personal profile to a business profile is pretty simple. You click Edit Profile. You then roll down to that particular position you want to edit, this one here. Beside your title, there's a little pencil. You click on it to edit. If you'll notice here, it says company name. You can actually change the company name. So let's say you just typed your company name in because you didn't have a company profile before. You can now associate it with your new business profile. So I can change company name and I can search for the name of our business there. Click on it, save it, and now you know you've associated your profile with the company. You'll know this as well because you'll see the company logo will actually be displayed right beside your description in your profile. So that's how you associate yourself with a company page once it's been built. So now we're pretty well ready to network. We're ready to connect. Uh, we've got a fully filled out profile. We've got rich media embedded it. We've got our work history loaded in. We're connected to our company. And this is now a truly viable representation of yourself and your business. And you're ready to now take the next steps and reach out and make connections. What I want to talk about now is adding connections. There's really three types of connections. There's people you really know. And this is really no. This is someone, just as a qualification, people you really know are people you've met in person, you've done business with. You know what? Even someone you've interacted, on, interacted with on Twitter, you know, nine or ten times back and forth uh, over a period of a month. Uh, that's somebody you, you actually really know or sort of know. No. Da, 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 ba, 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 ba. Okay, never mind. Adding connections. There's really three types of people. There's people you really know, people you sort of know, and people you don't know. So in the people you really know category, uh, this is people you've met in person, you've done business with, you've networked, you had phone calls with, you've Skyped with, you've emailed back and forth a few times. Um, th these are people that truly, truly you've had some type of interaction where when they get an email from you, they know you. They may not know you well, but they do know you. Number two is people you sort of know. So these are people that, for instance, uh, in a passing conversation, uh, you met them once at a networking function. You were introduced and they said hello. You got a business card, but that's it. Uh, this is someone who you've been reading their blog for months. You've been commenting on it. They've been interacting with you. They've thanked you via Twitter. That's someone you sort of know. And number three is people you just don't know. You don't know them. You've never met them. Uh, you may be in the same circles or heard about them, uh, or they may be halfway around the world. You just don't know them. And these are kind of three types of people. Now, typically, where LinkedIn started was it was truly a network that was focused on people you really know, connecting with them, um, and then through that network, getting introductions to people you sort of know and don't know. I think truly, it's still divided into that. And in fact, if you try to connect people you don't know, they can click a little button that says, I don't know this person, and you can get a nasty warning from LinkedIn. And actually, this happened to me uh, recently, uh, where a friend jokingly clicked, I don't know, Shane, uh, and I got a warning from LinkedIn telling me that they're going to limit my ability to connect and network if I'm moving out and connecting in an unsolicited manner with connections, with potential connectors and people in the marketplace. So they take this very seriously. So here's some key steps we're going to walk through right here. Is number four is only one group can be blanket added. Now what I mean by this, and I'll share with you in a minute, is that LinkedIn allows you to connect with your Gmail account or upload a comma separated text file or CSV from Outlook or one of your other um, databases um, and allows you to then find the people that you know, already know, that are on LinkedIn. Then you can reach out and connect with them. It's okay to do that in a blanket manner. You can connect with 50 people that way or 100 people that way because you know what? They already know you. They don't need a, they don't need a customized message explaining why you should connect. Uh, that You know what? Typically, a general request is fine. Now, 
For groups two and three, you need to customize and personalize the introduction. Uh, because if you're reaching out to connect with them or asking for an introduction, it can't be a blanket or generic request. It'll be flagged as spam and affect your account negatively and actually affect your personal brand. So let's do this right now. Let's make some connections, both ones we know and ones we don't, and walk through this process. Let's now look at how we add contacts. The first levels we talked about are people we do know. The best way to do that is just to simply upload a CSV file, a comma separated text file, uh, from your address book, uh, or if you're using an online tool like Gmail and whatnot, um, you can actually do it directly just by authorizing Gmail to share its address book. You won't be giving your contacts to LinkedIn, but what we'll be doing is for your own personal LinkedIn profile, syncing it and seeing who you know is already on LinkedIn. So by simply clicking on Gmail, and then I've already authorized it, clicking continue, it's going to connect with my address book. In this particular case, I'm going to go down to um, any mail. I'm going to then upload my contact file. I can, I've got the people I've connected with here in person at various conventions and events, and I can upload the file. Once I've uploaded a file, it'll let me know who on that list is actually connecting me on LinkedIn. So here's what it looks like. Once we hit the upload button, it'll then begin to connect us and show us a list of people we've uploaded. So once you're contacted, either by connecting via Gmail or uploading a CSV like I've done, are finished uh, integrating with LinkedIn and syncing, you'll get this list. And this list is the people that you know or, or in your database that are on LinkedIn. So now not all these people may be somebody you know. So one of these things, it starts with the Select All button. And if you click Add Connections, it's going to email every single one of these people. I mean, I don't know what's hidden in your address book, but there might be people you don't want to connect with. Um, possibly people you're already connected with uh, in other aspects. It might be not appropriate to reach out to the CEO of a client company, for instance. So it's important you don't just by default click the select all button. What also happens is a lot of people unselect the first few like, like such. And then what occurs is that they don't realize is that it is now still selected everybody below the fold here. So really important, again, the key step here is to unselect all and then individually reach out with the people that you want to connect with on LinkedIn. So once you've done that, once you've collect, uh, clicked on that connection, you can then decide to add connections just by simply clicking on this button. Then what it'll do in the next step is it'll actually select all your contacts who aren't on LinkedIn yet and invite them to connect with you. And this is something I think you have to be selective as well, uh, is really make sure, again, you don't just generically mass invite people to a social network that they're not even involved in. In many cases, people who aren't on LinkedIn don't even understand these invitations and feel like they're being spammed, especially because LinkedIn will send these messages repeatedly for you several times before the person, unless the person opts out. My suggestion is just to skip this step altogether. And if you don't know someone or you're not connected with them, to connect with them in a more soft way through a direct interaction or invitation, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So another way to connect with people is what I like to do is look at who's viewed my profile recently. So if I look here that nine people have viewed my profile in the last day, I can actually see that Rodney here is not connected with me, but he does work for a client that I've worked with for a number of years. So I might click connect. And if Rodney is part of any of the same groups, so I don't know him at all, for instance. So I see that, you know what, I can say we're a colleague, a classmate, we've done business together. None of these are true. In many cases, what occurs is it allows me to say we're friends, but then when I send the invitation and we're not, Rodney can say, I don't know this guy, and then LinkedIn will penalize you, often sending you warning emails and whatnot to say they're going to limit your ability to connect if you continue to spam people. So really important instead, in this particular case with Rodney, is I'm actually going to go get introduced. And I've got a multiple contacts who actually um, know Rodney's in that company. So I'm going to actually click this profile here and say, let's connect. And I'm going to write a custom message to Rodney here. Or actually, I'm going to write a custom message to Dan Brody telling him why I want to connect with Rodney. So what I've done here now is I've simply quickly send a quick message to Dan. He says, hi, Dan, I see that Rodney had checked out my LinkedIn profile, was part of the Build Direct team. It would be great to connect with another member of your team. Any chance you can introduce us? And then send the request. I'm not going to do it in this particular case because I'm actually going to see these guys next week in person. Um, but you hit that request. And what occurs then is what's really powerful about an introduction request 
is that in many cases, um, Dan won't just approve it. If I've got a good relationship with Dan, what he's going to do is he's actually going to write, hey, here's why you want to connect with Shane. So what they actually do is, in essence, it's not just a connection. There's actually a connection and an endorsement in many cases, which is a very powerful way to create an introduction. So in summary, LinkedIn works if you work it. Put your best foot forward. So complete that LinkedIn profile and get that business page done so that you really paint a great picture about yourself. And when they click through about that company you're working for, they really see good information on your enterprise. It looks like you're in business, not just some sort of individual solopreneur floating out there on LinkedIn uh, that you're really connected to an entity that means business. And it's about business, of course. That's why you need a business page. And then the most important part, of course, is that, again, Back to LinkedIn works if you work it, connect daily with people, interact, share best practices, share insights. And really, at the end of the day, the most important thing to look at, and this is a networking fundamental, is, and this comes from Darcy Rezac, author of Work the Pond, is that, you know what, always, when we're out there on LinkedIn, the question we need to ask ourselves when we're connecting with people is, how can I help? And this is going to go a long way to helping you build your network and your business.